so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Chuck Tuck and I am with Aver and I am a product trainer and evangelist for the company. And I think you've already seen this welcome and splash page that I have up here about our uh, unmatched service and support. And that is really important to us, especially right now. Uh, the, the service part really is important to us now and the services to, to all of you out there. And also what I want to say is from all of us at Aver to all of the educators out there, thank you very much for, for what you do. Uh, day in and day out, we know that you are working very hard to make things uh, best as possible for the kids out there. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this. So part of what you want to do to have a successful online uh, distance teaching experience or learning experience for the kids is to make sure that you set um, your expectations. So it says, you know, clearly set the expectations and rules of engagement. So for many of us, distance teaching is something new and different. Um, we haven't really used it in the past because we really haven't had a need to. But because of this, we need to be sure that we are clear with our expectations and make sure that we have an agenda laid out for, for the students. And we want to make sure that we get the kids involved as well. So part of that is really don't be afraid to assign a task to the students. I mean, they really know that they're there to, to learn. So um, part of this is you may want to assign one or two students to take notes. So it really depends on how many students are actually actively participating, meaning that they are online with you. So if you only have like five students, you can just assign one. But if you have more than 10, assign a couple of students to take notes. This way, not rotate that assignment too. Don't use one or two students all the time, just rotate it. And this is gonna help them get involved and feel like they are actually doing something. If you're using two students, uh, maybe ask them to collaborate afterwards. So and then they can send that to you or you can have them share it to the class on the next session. So again, online learning to, to most of the kids, it's, it's nothing new to them. They are constantly online, whether they're watching YouTube, playing games or um, I guess they're doing this thing called IRL in real life. So they're viewing things or people doing things in real life. But with that being said, they are used to this. So they are watching YouTube to learn. So they are there. So get them involved, get them engaged. And this is really a relatively new learning process for all of us. So allow them to help you create these lessons. If you don't have something already uh, laid out, like I said, ask them, how do we want to go about this? How do you want me to present this? What makes it easiest for you? How do you learn when you are online? Uh, and right now, there really isn't anything any more powerful than peer-to-peer -peer teaching and learning. So part of all this involves making materials available to everyone. It doesn't really do us any good if we are uh, creating this content, this video, and we just throw it up there for the kids to watch. You really want to make sure that they have access to this. And the access means that they can actually retrieve it. Like somebody asked earlier, is this going to be posted again so I can watch it? Uh, first time through, we may not retain this all the way. Uh, same goes with the kids. So make it available for them to watch. That goes along with giving a short description of the video. If you recorded your lesson, just short verbal description of what the lesson is and what your expectation is that you want out of the students. What is it that you want them to learn? It might be obvious, but make it blatantly obvious. Just give them that direction. So, and part of, again, uh, use ease of access, making things easy for them to retrieve. So don't use random types of file formats for pictures. So if you're using any type of images, make them the JPEG image. Those are uh, retrievable pretty much by every computer, everything out there, so it makes it really easy. And then if you're using any type of Word document, use maybe Word doc, uh, Microsoft, that's easy to retrieve, uh, or Google Docs for any of that text. And then you wanna make it available for them to download. So I don't know if you have Google Drive or Dropbox, but you might use one of those two or different method of you uh, as far as posting these things for the students to, to download. 
hopefully you won't have to email all this stuff out to each individual student. So I know it sounds like a lot of work to do, but it's a matter of really getting into the habit of doing this. And then once we're in the habit of doing it, it should make things much, much easier. So looks good over there. All right. So because we are doing this online, we sometimes there's a, a detachment from the, the instructor and the students because it is at a distance. So with that being said, we want to make sure that we encourage the students as teachers. We want to give them positive reinforcement. So that could mean the, you know, the thanks or the great job, the slap on the back, but from the distance, of course. So you've provided the materials and you've laid the foundation for their success. Now it's time for them to really think, share, and we want to all grow as a community. And ask for your students' feedback on what works for them and what really doesn't work for them. You know, a lot of us, we learn at different speeds and in different ways. So this is a great way, again, of engaging the kids, asking them, have that verbal conversation, go back and forth. So, and be flexible, you know, be open to their concerns. So that's something that you wanna maybe consistently ask them, is everything okay? Are we doing all right? Uh, do we need to change anything? So with all that being said, you know, if you're setting certain times for students to log on and to view your lessons, your teaching, sometimes it might be difficult. Maybe there's a family need. Uh, maybe, maybe they went on vacation. I don't know. But that's where all this recording comes into play. Just again, make it available for students. So bottom line, communication is paramount when it comes to online learning. So I'm going to say it again ask them regularly and make sure that we know what their needs are. So, and then this might sound corny, but then together we can all strive and thrive as a community. Hey, here we are. So what we want to do folks is if you are wanting to use Zoom and then you want to go ahead and share your webcam and the document camera, one of our Ava document cameras that's connected to your desktop or laptop using a USB cable. We are probably all familiar with going down here and hitting the share screen. Now, if we were to hit share screen, a lot of times this is exactly what we see. We see all this different types of options, but we oftentimes don't click on advanced. Maybe just because we're not used to it or it might be a little bit scared to do that but click on advance and you see where it says content from second camera just click on content from second camera and then hit share let's keep our fingers crossed here i may have to unplug this is the live image of the document camera using the sphere 2 software so let me click out of there and again what we want to do is hit share screen this is the basic. This is pretty much what we see when we uh, first log on to share screen, but go to advanced. Now we can hit content from second camera and then hit share. And there it is. This is the live image from the document camera. Now, again, this is just using the Zoom software and Sphere, excuse me, Zoom software, our document camera right here. And you see how the text is really good and the webcam and of course you can move your uh, picture in picture frame anywhere that you want on the screen now you can begin to talk to the students and do your work live and again part of the benefit of this is students are oftentimes they are used to hearing and seeing the instructor so if if my picture was not up there and you just heard me talking there could be a disconnect you might get bored um, this way again that they are able to see you so again that's a really easy step so let's go ahead and stop the share screen on this sometimes a laptop microphone might be a little bit tinny sounding that's that's with my experience um, again our document camera microphones are pretty good the other thing too is if you have your document camera a little bit closer to you and if you have your uh, laptop at a distance 
then definitely you're going to want to use the document camera microphone. Otherwise, you get more of the ambient sound around you and it sounds more like an echo or very tinny. For the DL30 features and benefits, you have advanced AI auto tracking, which allows the camera to track you no matter where you go. There's also a 12 times optical zoom plus a two times digital zoom. That allows for clear pictures from a distance. Next is you actually have a privacy mode. So what that means is that the camera will point 90 degrees down and you will not see anything in the classroom. The USB connectivity is for easy integration to work with all of the video conferencing platforms out there, such as Zoom, Team, Meet, Hangouts, or Echo 360 and more. Let's have a look at the features and benefits of the DL30 with a live demonstration. Auto tracking on, pulls out, and immediately it knows who and where I am, and you see that it is tracking me now. So whether I'm at a distance, this is about 10, 10 and a half feet away. You can go further if you want, of course or it could come right up to the camera right here. And right now I am about 24 inches away from the camera. And you see that it is still keeping me in focus, okay? I can move this way, keep me in focus, move this way. Anything that I want to do, it would come all the way back. Reading, reading is very important, of course. So we are at approximately a five times zoom. Uh, there's a lot of cameras out there that use oh up to five times five times digital zoom so at a distance of 10 feet this is what you're going to see this is fantastic i mean you can see everything here you see the book you see the print in the background and i can read to the students but i use that word immersive which means that i really want them to be immersed into what i'm doing here and engaged to participate and part of all that is being able to see and read and follow along in a book, especially for the younger kids. So keep in mind, again, this is at about a 10 foot distance and we're at a five times zoom. So what does a DL30 look like when I use my 12 times optical zoom? Well, this makes it much, much more immersive. And I'll use that word better for the students at home and even the students in the classroom, as I mentioned earlier, if you have a monitor, now they can actually read along follow you and the importance of that is you know the verbal and seeing and recognizing the words i hope you found this video to be helpful thank youで、4年前に香港が BYODで1人1台のタブレットを導入しました。で、その際に生徒たちがまあ、え、故障したタブレットとか、また壊れたタブレット、どうしても発生しますから、それに対して学校側として40台、え、生徒に貸し出し用のタ
もう一つはインテリジェンス充電ができるというところこれはあの多分当時,当時のあの頃はまだ他社でこれを採用してるのがなかったんじゃなかったかなと思いますタイマー充電はありましたけどあの電,電圧の弱いタブレットから順番に電気を送っていくっていうような、えー、構造の充電ファンは多分当時なかったと思うんでこれが結構大きな理由です実際に使っていてお困りになったこと困りことはございますかまあ困ったことはそんなにないんですがあのー、まあ本校は中学高等学校なんでそれなりに体の大きい子もたくさんいますから、あのー、特に困ってはいませんけどこれ例えば小学校だとこの大きさが低学年にはちょっと大きいんじゃないかなっていう気がしますであとは、えー、やっぱ重さですねこれは当然重さはあ,のあってしかるべきだと思います安定感のためにただ重いとやっぱりこのキャスターがついてても,もあの移動に、えー、手間がかかりますし香港のように、えー、9階から地下までがずっと教室になってる学校ではエレベーターで常に移動しますからエレベーターに乗せるときに、えー、引っかからないかっていうのはちょっと気になってんですこれからの整備のご予定を最後にお聞かせください。はい香港では今 iPad200 台で、えー、生徒用タブレットが1850台それから教員用のパソコンとタブレットが約300台ありますでそれらを、えー、充電保管庫で、えー、保管するっていうのは現実的には無理ですですから、えー、その中で貸し出しようとしている iPad それから、えー、生徒の、えー、修理の時の貸し出し機の分合計合わせて約、えー、6台の充電保管庫が今あるわけですがそのうちの1台はこれなんですけどもこれからはやっぱり、えー、残りの5台もできればこれに変えていきたいなというふうに思っています先生どうもありがとうございましたありがとうございました今日は大妻中学高等学校の先生加藤哲夫先生にお話を伺いました皆さんこんこにちは日本支社の高橋ですこれから昨年のギガプロジェクトへの取り組みについてご紹介しますよろしくお願いしますす突然ですがこちらのアニメは昨年公開され日本で歴代興行収入1位となりましたご存知ですよねその後台湾でもアメリカ映画の歴代最高売上げを記録アメリカでも外国語映画のオープニング興行成績歴代1位を記録したと聞いていますこちらは日本チームが2018年カートビジネスを本格的にスタートさせた時に作成した漫画この時は2020年にギガプロジェクトの大きな波が来ることを知りませんでしたところで日本政府がギガプロジェクトをスタートさせた理由何だと思いますかその前の年の12月にピサーの調査結果が公表されましたその内容に日本の教育業界は大きな驚きとして報道されました調査結果によると IT 立国のはずの日本の中学生は OECD 加盟国37カ国の中で授業で ICT 活用ランキングでほぼ全てで最下位で危機的な状況であることが判明したのです要するに学校の外では任天堂やプレステを使っている子どもたちが学校ではほとんど ICT を使っていないというのが判明したのですちなみに数学的リテラシーは世界で1位科学的リテラシーは2位と引き続き世界トップレベルただし、読解力のランキングは年々ダウンしてきています。日本政府は IT 国家の維新にかけて、ギガスクールという国家プロジェクトをスタートさせました。ギガとは、グローバルイノベーションゲートウェイフォーオールを訳したもので、すべての人々にグローバルで革新的な入り口をという意味です。誰一人取り残すことなく、子どもたち一人一人に
個別最適化され創造性を育む教育 ICT 環境を実現する施策であるということが明記されていますより良い社会と幸福な人生の作り手となる子どもたち学校教育の実現を目指す構想なのです。こちらはピサ調査発表とほぼ同時期に発表された初めてのギガスクール構想のキーワードが盛り込まれた文科省の資料です。この時は2019年から2022年までの4か年で ICT 環境を整備する計画でした。これがコロナ感染拡大によって急き休校指示がなされる中で「学校教育を止めるな」の号令のもと2020年の1年間で国家予算による1人1台タブレット配布が前倒しして実行されましたこうして2020年2月ごろからギガプロジェクトがスタートしましたこのギガプロジェクトが始まった頃実はアバー日本チームには自社の充電保管庫のユーザーは少なかったのです今回インタビューした学校大妻学院は当時では数少ないユーザー校の一つです大妻女子といえば日本では知らない人はいないとても有名な女子校です1908年からスタートですので実に110年以上も前から女性の自立のための女子一貫教育を進めてきた学校ですこちらの学校の校訓は恥を知れこの校訓について創業者は決して他人に対して言うことではなくあくまで自分に対して言うことである人に見られたり聞かれたりして恥ずかしいようなことをしたかどうかを自分で戒めることであると常々教えてきましたこれは今の日本人の女性のイメージの根底を作り出した教えであるとも言われています大妻学園はそれほど日本の教育事業にとって重要な学校と言えます今回インタビューに応じていただいた加藤先生はこの大妻中学高等学校の一人一台 PC の環境整備を支える重要な役割を担っていますアバー日本チームは2018年5月に国内最大級の展示会であるエディクス会場にて日本向けに製品化した C44I 保管庫を発表しました私は10年以上前から面識のあった加藤先生にエディクスで再開し C44I を紹介しました先生はすぐにアバーの保管庫を気に入ってくださり間もなくオーダーいただき国内で最も早く納品さ,させていただきました当時 ICT 教育市場における充電保管庫については PC やネットワーク機器のようにあまり機能や性能を比較したり評価ししたたりりする製品でではありませんでしたその中でアバーの保管庫は消費電力が規定値を超える場合の輪番機能やブレーカーなどを搭載していたのですまた当時は充電保管庫のための PR 動画や提案書を用意しているメーカーはほとんどありませんでしたそういった中で私たちはいち早く PR 動画を制作したり提案書を提供しました冒頭の漫画もその一つですその頃のアバーは昭和カメラメーカーとしては認知されていても充電保管庫メーカーとしての認知はそれほどでもありませんでしたそうした中で文部科学省はギガプロジェクトの実現に向けてさまざまな情報収集を行っていましたもちろん有名な学校でもあった大妻学院加藤先生のところにも何度も文部科学省の担当者が視察に来ていました加藤先生は ICT 環境整備に関しての実践では常に先頭を歩んできた方でありいいことも悪いこともストレートに伝える先生でもありますギガプロジェクトの実現に対し文部科学省は異例ともいえる危機調達のための標準使用案を全国の教育委員会向けに公表しましまたその使用案のうち充電保管庫における記述内容はそれまで私たちが展示会などで先生方へ PR してきたポイントがそのまま反映されていました。Hi everyone! 
This is Hai Shou Li from Taichung, Taiwan. I would love to offer my sincere appreciation to Ever for hosting this workshop. Today, please allow me to offer some perspectives regarding hybrid learning in real world. Currently serving at Weiger International School in Taiwan, I'm responsible for the language and digital education here in Weiger. Due to COVID-19, Taiwan has started remote learning for about five weeks. Before I dive into the topic, I would love to very quickly make a short introduction about my school for better contextual understanding. Weiger Educational Group offers complete K-12 systematic education. We have two kindergartens, two elementary schools, one high school, and one international school campus running AP program. We also offer private tutor programs outside of general school schedule. The whole education system accommodates about 4,000 students. So I would say, we have quite comprehensive digital learning experience because our digital education experience comes from a wide range of age groups. Starting from grade 7, students here in Weger are given one personal iPad. This iPad is seen as a part of the learning equipment and will be provided to them as a gift when they graduate. We make sure no game or unwanted apps are installed by removing App Store. For elementary school or younger learners, we have charging cards ready so that students can use iPad whenever they want. We understand that hardware investment is a must in the beginning, and a key to success lies in the ease of use for teachers and staffs alike. We also understand that building a digital campus is much more than offering hardware and infrastructure. That's why we offer complete training to all educators in our school system and make sure all teachers are certified as iPad teacher. As you can see in the picture, every single teacher in my school is an iPad certified teacher, including myself. Weger is currently the only school in Taiwan which holds 100% of iPad teacher certification rate. Please do not underestimate the importance of training and software. Teachers are the centerpiece when it comes to the delivery of teaching quality. The more you offer your teachers, the more they will offer their learners. Teachers, more often than not, are good learners. However, with more ages or with, let's say, with more seniority from time to time, changes are a little bit less likely to happen. Things are always harder in the beginning. That's why here in Weger, we want to make sure the learning curve is as smooth as possible so that we don't scare our teachers away in the very beginning. We all know Newton's third law, the law of friction. When we want to move a static object, we need to apply more force. There are, however, many choices to lower friction. While you may choose to ap apply more force, you may locate a smoother surface. Our ex experience here in Weger show that more force may work in the short term, but with every force, there comes a counter force. If you push your teachers too hard, you need to prepare for some pretty negative feedback. So we choose not to push too hard, but to create a smoother transition. Please allow me to illustrate how. Just like a reflection on a mirror, we try to replicate the current teaching experience using blackboards or pen and paper. We want to make sure teachers get digitalized bit by bit. They still utilize their most accustomed teaching methods and it's up to the school and administration to help them appreciate the beauty of digital education and the convenience and the benefits of new approach might bring for them. The key lies in making teachers feel that's easy and doable, if not 
after this. Allow me to repeat: the key lies in making teachers make it easy and doable. If not, after this. That's why we use DuckCam or Visualizer. We want teachers to use the tools they are most accustomed to. We want teachers to feel that they are not teaching to the whole class when they are presenting the concept. We want them to feel that they are teaching to their own children with a pen and a paper in their hand. There's no need to push any button when they want to change the color of the pen, and when some of them. Get artistic. They can simply draw in the most natural way, just like illustrating a basic concept to a learner across a small table. We find this approach easily accessible to most of our teachers. Some even enjoy using pen and paper than using blackboards and chalks. There's another reason for duck and muse in digital classrooms. Imagine. You are teaching young adults. They can follow pretty closely if they want to, right? Now, imagine you are teaching younger kids. Kids maybe five to seven years old. When you ask them to turn to page five and read from paragraph two, line three, how confident will you be that most of your learners could follow? With Visualizer, it's a whole different story. It's no longer. Let me tell you, but let me show you. We find visualizers especially effective when it comes to learning scenarios in young learners. Students follow closer. Teachers feel less stressed. Parents are happier. Win-win. Of course, we have teachers who prefer to teach using blackboards. After all. This might be their most comfortable teaching approach for years. For teachers who prefer this approach, we prepare cameras, which can be linked to computers for easier, easier consecutive upload procedures. Please bear in mind that getting the course recorded is the easiest part. Even an iPhone or any smartphone can do. But the thing is, managing all the files. And sending files to learner is the key to lasting influence and success. Also, we want cameras that can be used as webcams, because most learners are accustomed to streaming video services using teleconferencing systems like Zoom or Google Meet. Simply put videos on video website like YouTube or Vimeo may not be enough, because interaction is the key. In online courses, moreover, we want digital cameras with good optical zooming capabilities for clear images on the blackboard, and the ability to focus on the teacher only. Please understand, I'm not sure if this is the same case in your school, but in my school, this is the case. Some of the parents really do not appreciate their children showing up on any video footage. Last, I would love to share some very quick tips. As an administration staff or management member, it's our duty to find the path of least resistance. When you make things easier for your teachers, you will also make things easier for yourself by replicating their original teaching habits. The path may offer least resistance in a way. I would also love to utilize this chance to promote the need of hybrid teaching. It goes without saying that it's going to be extremely detrimental for our learners to look at a screen nonstop for more than six hours per day. I want to encourage schools around the world to incorporate more hybrid teaching methods and make sure our learners spend more time off screen than on screen. I know. Digital school is beautiful, splendid, and ever-changing. Still, please allow our learners to feel the texture of the paper with their fingers, smell the fragrance when they turn the pages, and feel the weight of knowledge in their hands. Most importantly, 
I want to emphasize that digital education is by no means face-to-face -face education digitalized. They are similar but different. With digital education, more multimedia can be incorporated. Students from different countries can collaborate. Students can create, explore, and interact much easier. Replicating original teaching method is a very good place to begin with, but not the very end of digital education development. The methods shared today are by far not the only options. I encourage schools and teachers alike to choose the best path and strategy based on your current situation. With the manpower you have, the resource you hold, the support you have from the top management, these can all be critical factors leading you to very different choices. To summarize my part, I would love to quote Robert Frost, last stanza of his poem, stopping by woods on a snowy evening. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. The digital world may be full of unknown challenges, just like a dark ooze, but please bear in mind that we have promises to keep for our parents, for our learners, and most importantly, for ourselves. May we all encourage each other and find success in wherever we put efforts in. If there's any clarification needed uh, with all the aforementioned parts, please do not hesitate to contact me via this email address. Thank you all very much.